So, how does the internet work? Most of us know how to use the internet without actually understanding how it works, sort of like electricity in your home. You use it every day, but may not understand the mechanics behind it. And if the electric grid is difficult to understand, then the internet must be impossible, right? Wrong. Whenever most people think of the internet, this is what comes to mind. The internet is not a bubble cloud, even in the new age of cloud computing. The whole fuzzy cloud picture was created by people more concerned about job security than education. This is the internet. The internet is a wire, actually buried in the ground. It might be fiber optics, copper, or occasionally beamed to satellites or through cell phone networks, but the internet is simply a wire. The internet is useful because two computers connected directly to this wire can communicate. A server is a special computer connected directly to the internet, and web pages are files on that server's hard drive. Every server has a unique internet protocol address, or IP address. Just like a postal address, IP addresses help computers find each other. But since 72.14.205.100 doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, we also give them names like Google.com, Facebook.com, or SecurityCatalyst.com. So, this is how it works. Your computer at home is not a server, because it's not connected directly to the Internet. Computers you and I use every day are called clients, because they're connected indirectly to the Internet through an Internet service provider. Here, we'll pretend that this is my home laptop, and I'm using DSL. Now, let's pretend that I want to visit AOL.com, which is, coincidentally, both a server and an ISP. I hop onto my laptop with DSL, go through my ISP, onto the internet, and look at AOL.com. My computer connects with AOL.com, and I can look at its web pages. Now, let's say that I want to send an email to Aunt Ruth. Aunt Ruth has AOL dial-up from home, and I've got a Gmail account. I log on to Gmail.com and compose a message to Aunt Ruth's email address, AuntRuth at AOL.com. Once I click Send, Gmail.com sends the email to AOL.com. The next day, Aunt Ruth dials into AOL servers and retrieves the email. Whenever an email, picture, or web page travels across the Internet, computers break the information into smaller pieces called packets. When information reaches its destination, the packets are reassembled in their original order to make a picture, email, web page, or tweet. Okay, so imagine you're at work, sitting next to your boss, and you're both surfing online. Your boss is doing market research, and you're updating your Facebook profile. You're both sending packets back and forth over the Internet. But what's to keep your packets from accidentally ending up on your boss's screen? <laughs> that could be embarrassing. The solution to that problem is IP addresses and routers. Everything connected directly or indirectly to the Internet has an IP address. Everything. That includes your computer, servers, cell phones, and all of the equipment in between. Anywhere two or more parts of the Internet intersect, there's a piece of equipment called a router. Routers direct your packets around the Internet, helping each packet get one step closer to its destination. Every time you visit a website, upwards of 10 to 15 routers may help your packets find their way to and from your computer. Imagine each packet as a piece of candy wrapped in several layers. The first layer is your computer's IP address. Your computer sends the packet to the first router, which adds its own IP address. Each time the packet reaches a new router, another layer is added until it reaches the server. Then, when the server sends back information, it creates packets with an identical wrapping. As the packet makes its way over the Internet back to your computer, each router unwraps a layer to discover where to send the packet next until it reaches your computer and not your boss's. <laughs>